Welcome everyone. Please stand and join us in singing our opening song. Good morning, those steps keep moving. Thank you, Celebration Singers, for walking us here to Unity of Wilming Celebration Service this Sunday morning. I'm Lainey Mauger, your host for the day, and I'm the president, uh, Vice President of the Board, but I'm also your host, and that's the most important part of today. I would like to welcome you here, present, all of you out there, and especially the people here on the platform. Katie Dees, our music director, Chelsea, Kelsey McGurry, our soloist, who you'll be hearing shortly. Our guitarist, Justin Lacey. I was going to say Hall for some reason, but anyway. And then we will have our speaker, Dr. Herbert Harris, who, who has been here before, but he is here again today. And he will be presenting Updating Your Life Goals. Dr. Harris comes to us as a native Wilmingtonian but he has had a career as a retired attorney. He's been in New York, he has studied unity, he speaks many languages, and he has written a terrific book called The 12, say again? The 12 Universal Laws of Success, and here we are basically manifesting that. So as we start our service, I invite you to join us in our statement of belief. There is but one power, power, it said one power, active in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotence. And then there are our three affirmations which remind us of who we are and where we are all the time. I am a beloved expression of God. I am here for a holy purpose. I am in the right place at the right time, right now. And that right place is to allow Kelsey to sing for us. Mm -hmm. 
I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying, you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lost with no direction. My faith is shaking, but I Gotta keep trying, gotta keep my head held high. There's always gonna be another mountain, I'm always gonna wanna make it move, always gonna be an uphill battle, sometimes I'm gonna Thank you, Kelsey. Wow. Now I would like to have the honor and pleasure of introducing our speaker, Dr. Herbert Harris. Get yourself oh. straight up. <laughs> yes, let me, uh, I got all my stuff here. <laughs> let me get my stand in place, got all my little stuff here. I like to say, whoopee! <laughs> I am so happy to be here. I tell you, ooh, I love speaking at the Unity Church here in Wilmington because this is a great group of people. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Let me make sure I got all my buttons pushed. Sandra keeps me on target. She gives me a checklist for everything. Good morning, check. <laughs> Have your coffee, check. <laughs> so thank you so much, Miss Sandra, for keeping us in check. Sandra is a retired, she was a former member of the Wilmington City Council, which is a job in itself, and then a former member of the North Carolina State House of Representatives, which is really a job <laughs> in itself. So give her a hand. Thank you, dear. 
I always like to thank the board for having me speak because I love speaking. I love doing what I do. And one of the things that really, I guess, excites me is sharing with people that I know. Alan, my good friend. <laughs> We go back to the days of community organizing. You know, Alan was a serious community organizer. He, he doesn't talk loud, but when he speaks, everybody listens. So our topic for today is updating your life goals. And you know my style. I like to have audience participation. In other words, I like to do stuff, and we, are, we call it the, the old church. It's stuff like call and response. So when you say, when I say, how do you feel? You say, great, let's try that. How do you feel? Great. See, some of y'all were anxious. <laughs> She's like, I'm great, I'm great. Well, wait till I ask. <laughs> That's okay. I like to do that. How about beautiful through and through? I am beautiful through and through. Let's try that together. I am beautiful through and through. Now, that's an affirmation. And a lot of times, what we tell ourselves defines ourselves. You know, you get up in the morning, you say, I feel terrible today. Chances are, if the day keeps on, you're going to feel terrible. But the, one of the laws of the universe, is laws of God, and laws of infinity, is, is the law of command. What you say is what you get. So I have another commandment. Don't say it anything you don't want it. <laughs> So what I'd like to do before we get started is sort of put us in a, a nice space because I'm covering a lot today. I, I tell you, when, when I talk about goals, I'm a goal fanatic, you know, for two reasons. One, because I love to accomplish them, and two, because I could do a better job. <laughs> okay. Have you ever felt that, that you could do a better job at accomplishing your goal and doing the things you want to do for your life? So just for a moment, let's just do a quick sort of stretching a little bit and just close your eyes for a moment and just take a deep breath just let it out slowly take a deep breath let it out slowly i am at peace with myself let us affirm that together i am at peace once more, I am at peace with myself. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. All right. I like to start today with a, a context. I use the Bible as a text for spiritual enlightenment. You know, a lot of people approach the Bible from a, from a, you know, you sin, you didn't sin, thou shalt do this, thou shouldn't do that. You know, who knows what thou should do. But really, in truth, I look at the Bible as a spiritual text of enlightenment. And so when we read the scriptures, read it with a metaphysical approach. In other words, it's bigger than the words on the page. Each one of those words has a specific meaning. Uh, the... Uh, one of the most powerful books the, uh, in the Unity Library is the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. You spend some time with that, you'll see and hear everything in the Bible from a completely different point of view. So in this context, I'll be sharing scripture, but it's from a point of view of instruction and education and enlightenment. I love to open with a Tony Robbins quote, and he said, setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. I'll say that again. Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. When you think about faith, for example, faith, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Well, goals can take you to the things that are not seen. So this idea of goals is critical because it gives us direction in our lives. We're on a journey this year. Everybody, yeah, I guess, I noticed we sell a lot more books during the uh, first of the year. And by the way, this is 
copy of the 12 Universal Laws of Success, and we sell them in the lobby, and we donate a portion to the church. But at the first part of the year, we sell 10 times more books in January than any other month. Now, by August, our sales drop. <laughs> July, <laughs> so you say, well, what's up? And it's because people are programmed at the first part of the year to set goals. They say, you know, what do you call it? New Year's resolutions. But nobody ever says, well, what happens in July? when you're halfway down the line. And so the question we say now is, what can I do now to transform my life into what I want it to be at the end of the year? You know, many times we are subtly saying, let's wait. <laughs> you know, like all this goal setting stuff, like let's, we only got six months left. <laughs> okay? But that's not really where we need to be. Success is a continuous realization of a worthwhile purpose. Growth is really, that's the one universal constant. This new telescope that can see, now this is interesting, see where the world was five billion years ago. <laughs> Talk about late. <laughs> okay. But the idea is the one thing about the universe that everybody, it's always about growth. It's always in motion. And so if we're a part of the universe, each and every aspect of us is really, as the universe, we're always in a process of growth. And so we like to look at our life as a success journey, your success journey. And anytime you're on a journey, you know what's really useful? GPS. <laughs> you, know, this, I, you know, I don't know how we, we got around before you had GPS. Like, I use a GPS to get home. <laughs> Sandra gets so angry, she says, if you don't know your way home by now, you deserve to get lost. <laughs> but the GPS has a, is a very powerful instrument because it needs two things to operate. It needs a location, and it needs a destination. And that's really what this talk is about today. We have a particular location right here, right now. We're at the midpoint of the year. And actually, since the time we chose our topic, time has passed us by. We live on the river of time. If we want to imagine what existence is like, we live our lives on the river of time, which is always moving. And if we look at what life is about, it's really about having a boat or a ship operating on the river of time. And a GPS can help get us there, where we want to go. So let's look at now. Here we are in the middle of the year, and we say, let's do a checkup. <laughs> a checkup from the neck up and from the heart down. So how many people really wrote their goals down at the beginning of the year? Woo! Give them a hand. <laughs> If you don't write them, chances are you won't accomplish them. We always talk about that Harvard study. I, I did some research on this, Alan, and it, it seems that there never was a Harvard study, but, but, but you know, and then they said it was a Yale study. Yale said, I don't want no parts of it. <laughs> but the study basically said that they tracked some business students for 10 or 20 years, and that of that group, only 3% of them had written goals and a plan to follow them. I think 13% had goals that they didn't write down. And 84% had no goals at all. And I think most people kind of fall in that 84%. Mm -hmm. But what it said, went on to say is at the end of either 10 or 20 years, that 3% was worth more materially than the 90 seven percent put together. Even the people who had written their goals, and who at least had goals, but maybe didn't write them down, they were like earned at least three times as much money as the ones who didn't have any goals at all. So the bottom line is goal setting is powerful. The Bible says it. In the Habakkuk, one of the shortest books in the Bible, it says, write the vision, make it plain, 
upon tablets that he and I, the Bible is written in such a masculine form. I try to translate it, you know, it's like, almost like women didn't exist. All the scriptures by he, he, he. Very rarely you find a scripture that says she. So write the vision, make it plain that whoever reads it can run. That's a plan. It said, though the vision may tarry, wait for it. It will surely come to pass. In other words, the fact that you have a vision at all means that you have the capability of, mani of, of manifesting it. Now, that's amazing. You think about this. Most of the great inventions that ever were came out of an environment where people said it was impossible. I mean, even the four-minute mile. I mean, I was watching the, was it, the track meets the other day? And I mean, they've slaughtered the four-minute mile, but back in the early, what, <laughs> in the early 50s, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile. Until that time, they said it was impossible. And you know, it's interesting. Whatever you believe, your, your subconscious mind objectifies. When people said it was impossible, nobody can run a four-minute mile. People tried, and they couldn't do it. But Bannister said, I'm not going to buy into that. I think I can do it. Now, he didn't just wake up on a Tuesday and say, let's go for it. <laughs> you know, he prepared for it. He worked at it. So this idea of a vision is, is critical. And the vision, there's another scripture that says, where there's no vision, the people perish. It sounds kind of harsh, doesn't it? <laughs> where there's no vision. What it really is saying is, where there's no vision, the people perish. You don't accomplish what you were set here to do. Because it goes on to say, but they that keepeth the law, happy are they. What does that mean? The law. This is what the book is about, the universal laws of success. This is what the Bible is about. The, the Bible has laws which, when you see them for what they are, give you instruction on how to live. And so it's saying, those that follow the law, the law of manifestation, the law of thought, the law of transformation, the law of change, the law of affirmation, what you say, if you follow these laws and you have a vision, incredible things can happen. Are you ready for incredible things to happen in your life? Say yes. Let's try it. Are you ready for incredible things to happen in your life? Yes. That, didn't sound, that sound kind of weak. <laughs> Let's do that again. Are you ready for incredible things to happen in your life? Yes. yes. There we go. All right. So we prepare ourselves to receive the goodness that we want. So some of us wrote our goals down. Some of us didn't. A handful of us wrote them and actually read them over. Every success book tells you what? Read your goals three times a day. And I tell you, whenever I don't do that, I can tell. It's amazing. You write your goals, and if you don't read them every day, come next Thursday, you go like, what was my goal again? <laughs> this goal is going to change my life as soon as I remember what it was. But that's really how we, many of us operate. And I'm saying us because, listen, I'm trying to do, be better myself. And so the same things that happen to you happen to me. We all work at it. So when we look at where we are right now, someone said, well, at the midpoint of the year, do you need to update your goals? Can you keep operating on what you had before? Well, if you didn't have anything, that's a problem. And even if you had something, even if you diligently followed your goals, guess what? We're different now than we were six months ago. The necessary, the world of growth, the, the, the river of time moves us along. So even though we follow all the great lessons of goal manifesting, we're different. And so we have to constantly reevaluate where we are so that we can now go forward most effectively. So when we talk about this, there, there are four concepts I want to talk about today. It's called, one is assess. In other words, we have to figure out where you are. That's that, that GPS. And when I say assess where you are right now in every regard, in your thinking, in your emotions, in your habits, in your relationships, address. The ones you've assessed where you are, there's got to be something you can fix. 
There's got to be something that you can do to make yourself better. Progress. That once you have assessed and addressed, you got to do something. I mean, we got to go out and say, hey, I need to get more help. I need to manage my time better. I need to get away from some people I'm hanging around. <laughs> but this idea of, of, of assessing now, progressing, is now you got to get to work at it. The rubber hits the road. There's a scripture that says, whatsoever your hand findeth to do, do it with all your might. That means you've got to get busy. You've got to do something. So let's, let's look at this a little bit. When we think about where we are right now, there's a, a Bible story in Acts, I think the 16th chapter, Paul and Silas. And Paul and Silas were messengers. They were carrying the doctrine and disciples and teaching the words of Jesus. And kind of like today, <laughs> the, the system didn't like it. <laughs> you know, a lot of times you say truth and speak good things. People don't like it. So they got locked up, and they put them in jail. And there's an interesting thing the Bible says. They put them in a, in a prison inside the prison. So that means that they really didn't want the truth to get out. And then they put them in locks. They, they, they had them handcuffed inside the prison, inside the prison. So the symbol is that there's a force in the universe that really does not want truth to manifest. It's like weeds. How many gardeners do we have here? Uh-huh. You ever notice you don't have to plant weeds? <laughs> Sandra's a gardener. She said, you got to go up and pull up the weeds. I'm like, I didn't plant them. Who planted them? But that's the yin-yang aspect of the universe. You know the story with George Burns. Boy, I just really dated myself, Alan. George Burns. When I talk to young people, like, George Burns, who's he play for? <laughs> <laughs> he play with the Knicks? <laughs> George Burns, was, there was a movie called Oh God. And uh, the kid asked him, he says, if you're God, why do you create sickness? And why do you create darkness and all these negative things? And George Burns, he says, you know, it's a good question. He says, even though I am God, I've never been able to figure out how to create an up without a down. How to create light without darkness. And so that's a part of the universal pattern. There's always going to be a yin-yang aspect. There's always night, darkness. But the whole essence of truth is that no matter how dark the night, the light always comes. No matter how bad the situation, it's always overcome at some point. So <laughs> Paul and Silas are there in jail. They're praying and singing, kind of like the old civil rights days. You know, it's interesting how you take, when, when we, I just dated myself again. <laughs> when we, <laughs> when we were doing the protests, one of the things you did when you were in jail, you prayed and sang. And what that saying is that as a result of their praying and their sang, singing, an earthquake happened, which flung the doors of the prison open. When we look at where we are right now at the midpoint of the year, in many instances, we're kind of like Paul and Silas. We, we, we're in a prison. You know? it, it might be the, uh, the prison of complacency. I mean, a lot of us, we got where we are right now, we say, you know what? I'm good. <laughs> all this striving, all this extra stuff, I survived these six months. And, you know, going through this pandemic, that's not a hard, that's, not a, that's a good thing. I survived all of this. I'm still here. You know? I don't want to do really to put too much effort going forward. I'm just going to hang tough. Sometimes we're caught up in the prison of mistaken assumption. You know, we can be living our lives based on somebody else's expectation. I mean, as a parent, it's hard not to really want to put your dreams on your children and say, I want you to be a doctor. Kid can't count to three, you know. Like <laughs> Maybe you got to work at it. <laughs> Mistaken assumptions even about yourself. You know, sometimes we can be so focused on past failures, past disappointments, that we can't see, man, this six months ahead. And right now, it's only, what, five months and a week? <laughs> yeah. So this next five months and a week, forget the phase of the past. Forget what didn't work. We can go forward. 
We might be in the prison of wasted time. Uh oh. Mm -mm. Time, that river of time waits for no one. And so even if you do nothing, when we were talking with some young kids, and I said, what are you guys doing? We're just chilling. And then maybe we'll take a beer. <laughs> Anything else? Nope, just chilling. Well, if you're just chilling, guess what? The river of time is moving you along. So if you've wasted time, that's your most precious asset. Everybody has the same amount of time. We may have, you know, all kinds of differences, but everybody has the same amount of time. We might be locked up in the prison of negative thinking. It's a bad prison to be in. Where we see the glass is half empty. Think about that. It's half empty. What's the expectation? It's going to be fully empty soon. We might be in the prison of negative emotions. We can be locked up in fear. Anger is one of the worst, because that means somebody else is taking control of your space and now got you dancing to their music, and you think you're doing something. We may be in the prison of bad habits. Habits, in the beginning, we make the habits, in the end, the habits make us. And then worst of all, we can be in the prison of bad relationships. And that, that's probably of all the things, that's the hardest to get out of because we have so many different interrelationships. And that, those bad relationships can be the very prison that's keeping you from doing the thing you want to do by the end of this year. So let's look at the process. How do we fix it? Number one, assess your present situation. Whether you have goals or not, it really doesn't matter because if you followed your goals diligently, as we say, time has passed. So look at where you are right now. I love the Ben Franklin method. Ben Franklin was very powerful. He said, look, if you want to decide where you are and how to move forward in your life, the Ben Franklin method, he would do this. Put it up. See this? Ben Franklin would take a sheet of paper, draw a line down the middle, and one across the top, kind of like a cross. And on one side, he would put victories, all the good stuff you've done. Everybody in here has done some good stuff. Would you agree? Yeah. Kind of weak. <laughs> Everybody in here has done some good stuff. Would you agree? Yeah. That's better. Okay. So you put your victories. On the left side, you put your lessons. There are no failures. So that's a mindset. There are only lessons. So if Everything went wrong, wow, what a lesson. <laughs> if you lost all your money in that deal, whoo, that's a lesson. If somebody did you really, really wrong, whoo, that's a lesson. So Ben Franklin would take this, and at the end, of the, he, he'd go down all his victories and all his lessons. So right now, at this midpoint of the year, write down all the things you've accomplished, your flowers, and then write down the list of the lessons. And the way to go forward now is if you have more flowers than lessons, you're doing pretty good. Make some minor adjustments. More flowers than lessons. Let's say that together. I want that to sink in together. More flowers than lessons. And I think everybody in the room is kind of in that category. We've done all right. A few minor adjustments, and we can make the rest of this year great. On the other hand, if you have more lessons than victories, you need an overhaul. <laughs> you need a serious, you know, they say, check up from the neck up and from the heart down. The beautiful thing about this is that we don't have to wait for an earthquake to help us get past the things that have been holding us back. So now, once we have made that decision to assess our situation, we can now make adjustments. So, example, I wanted to lose, my goal was to be 164 pounds by the end of this year. As you can see, I have not done well. <laughs> <coughs> I started out, actually, I think, you know, I, I started out around 200. 
I got really excited and was following the plan. I got down to around 189. Then I started backsliding. <laughs> Has anybody else done that? <laughs> okay. I back, so right now, as Sandra says, she's, you know, we've like, we want to have the scale calibrated. <laughs> <laughs> I got on this thing, it was 196. Obviously, it's wrong. <laughs> we took it off, we changed the batteries. I mean, we really did this. <laughs> Put new batteries. And she, she's so patient, she's like, mm hmm. <laughs> yep, yep, change the battery. You know, still reads the same. So now, at the end of the year, at the midpoint of the year, I got to make some adjustments. And that's really with, with each of you here. Whatever those things are that you've done so far, when you've done that checkup in your assessment, now you address them. So I say, okay, right now I'm about 190, 191, you know, with the gust to 195. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so if I just if I just settle down, <laughs> okay, and be more mindful, if I get into a better exercise routine. Frankly, I think I probably need help. You know, I often one poo pooed the people who got coaches and, you know, what do they call it, uh, uh, personal trainers. But I think I may, I may need help from a higher authority. <laughs> okay. But that's okay. When you assess it, you, that, that's the whole point. Because if you don't fix it, if you don't know it's broken, you won't fix it. So in this assessment phase now, in, I'm sorry, in this um, adjustment phase, this growth phase, when we re revisit our goals, there are a couple of things we need to pay attention to. Our goals must be smart. S, they must be specific. Most people say, what's my goal? My goal is to be happy. Well, how do you know when you're there? What does happy mean to you? It means one thing to you, it means somebody else to you. So your goals must be specific. And specific in a sense of sensory. How does it feel? How does it look? How does it smell? How does it move? M, it must be measurable. If you can't measure it, how do you know when you're going to get there? A, it must be set in advance. Well, that's the reason we wanted to do this class today, because now it's in advance. <laughs> we, we're not in December saying, man, what can we do to finish up strong? <laughs> Okay. We now have five months and an extra week or so to make those changes set in advance. R, it must be realistic. And realistic based on where you are right now. Nothing is impossible. It just may not be probable based on where you are. You don't walk in the, in the gym and press 250 pounds. Any weightlifters here? Good. <laughs> are you a weightlifter? <laughs> yeah, so we got one weightlifter. I'm not a weightlifter. I'm a weight watcher. <laughs> I watch other people lift weights. <laughs> but you don't walk in the gym and start pressing 200 pounds. You've got to work your way up. So realistic based on where you are right now. And then T, it must cover a time period. So the one thing we know, we already comply with two parts. We're working in advance, and we have the time period. We've got five, about five, and a, five months and a week to end up. So now that we have gotten our goals together, let's bring this, as they say, let's wrap it up. I think I've given you enough tools to get going. Once we've set, it, set, up, set up our new goals, once we have decided to address the issues that need to be addressed, and once we now decide to progress to get busy doing what must be done, then the fourth piece is the manifest. Then once you start doing stuff, you have to constantly check how you're doing. If you don't monitor your progress, it'll be like me in the weight thing. You know, all of a sudden I'm 10 pounds heavier than I was before. Whatever you have to, whatever you set out to do, monitor your progress so that you can now say, hey, every day and every way I'm getting a little better. You don't, it doesn't happen overnight. But as long as you're moving, progress is the key. So let's I'm put this all together here. As we go forth from this point on, 
Let us eliminate the prison of complacency. Let's be committed to whatever it is to do it now. Let's say that together. Do it now. Let's eliminate that prison of mistaken assumption. Let's have a plan to get out of that. We say to ourselves, you know what? I can do this especially those mistake, mistaken assumptions about yourself. I can do this. It can be done. Let's escape from that prison of time wasting by asking ourselves each day, each moment, what's the best use of my time right now when I consider my goals, my vision, and my purpose? Let's eliminate those negative thoughts. Focus on the positive. Only positive thoughts together. Only positive thoughts. Let's eliminate these negative emotions of doubt, fear, insecurity. And let's replace them with emotions of confidence and love. I live with positive emotions. Let's say that together. I live with positive emotions. Let us work on those bad habits. We know what they are. You know, the interesting thing, all of us really, really know what they are. And replacing those bad habits with good habits of organization, of time management properly. And then most of all, let's identify and eliminate those negative people who suck your energy, who steal your time. That's probably the worst thing people do when they steal your time. Let's eliminate them. And so let's be committed to live our lives flat out. When I say flat out, doing everything, all the time. When we can live our lives flat out, then we can get to the end of each day and say, hey, you know what? I did everything I could to make tomorrow the way I want it to be. I'm going to say it, and then you repeat after me. I did everything I could, I everything I could to make tomorrow the way I want it to be. Manifest your life dreams by saying, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Let's do that together. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. When you can do that, then you can be what you want to be. You can do what you want to do. And you can have whatever you want to have. So let's stand and let's do our closing affirmations. Everybody stand up and I'll say it and you repeat after me. And then we're done. Woo! I've enjoyed this. <laughs> Affirmation number one. I can be what I want to be. I can be what I want to be. I can do what I want to do. I can do what I want to do. I can have what I want to have. I can have what I want to have. When you can do that, then your goals become the wings beneath your wings that will inspire you, that will protect you, and that will uplift you to your higher purpose, always knowing that the best is yet to come. Let's say that together. The best is yet to come. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. Whew. We're going to do a meditation. Sit down. I haven't learned how to do a stand-up meditation yet. <laughs> I try, though. Did you see this program? They they have some new product now. I saw on, on uh, Today Show. It's a stand-up thing that you can take a nap standing up. I'm like, if we've gotten that lazy, <laughs> we got bigger problems. <laughs> okay. Whew. Let us just sit straight up in our seats with our feet flat on the floor. Close our outer eyes and open our inner eyes. And 
take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. And then this vibration. I want you to see a forest, see the trees, the beautiful pine trees, and look around and smell, the smell of Take it in. And as you smell the pine trees, let's walk through those trees to a hill that rises up from the trees. Let us walk up that hill. And as we climb that hill, just look around and now see the trees from another level. Now see the tops of the trees and continue to walk up that hill. in total relaxation, let it out. And let us affirm, I am at peace with myself forever. I am at peace with myself. And as we stand upon that hill, we feel the wind blowing upon our face. And it's a wind of love that makes us feel comfortable. It's a wind of healing that passes through our bodies from the top of our heads to the tip of our toes. It's a wind of joy. Feel that joy in your heart. Your heart beats just a little faster, anticipating the joy, anticipating the love, anticipating the light. And there on that hill, we see the light. from above, a beautiful light, a warming light, a healing light, that grows and surrounds us and envelops us and lifts us up. breath, and let it out slowly, knowing that we are one of good, we are one with God. And so it is. Give yourself a hand. We've done it. Thank
Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Harris. Wow. I'm glad you were here to share with us and we can share with each other. Now is the time to consider what we have learned and what we can share. It's time for our offertory. If you have resonated with any part of today's message, as I have, and I take the sounds of the room to say that we all have, you may contribute in person in the basket. You may contribute online in donation. You can contribute through PayPal and Venmo. And if you use Amazon, you can contribute to Smiles for Wilmington. So join us in our mudra. Thy love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. So it is. Thanking us all in advance for what we have. both ways it hurts I bury my heart here in the stir I hope it's a seed I hope it works I need to grow here I could be closer to life closer to me I don't have to do this perfectly yeah rain it pours rain it pours it's pouring on me the rain it falls rain it in the seeds of love and hope, love and hope. We don't have to stay stuck in the way you get. Have I the courage to change? Have I the courage to change? Have I the courage to change today? Have I the courage to change? Have I the courage to change? It hurts. I bury my heart here in the stir. Hope it's a seed. I hope it works. I need to grow here. I could be closer to life, closer to me. I don't have to do this perfectly. darkest place let the sunshine pain goes away nothing is permanent for me flowers they bloom and fade away the beauty it happened inside of me even if it's a memory Thank you, Kelsey. We 
are coming to the end of our service, and we are winding down. And as always in services, there are announcements, and here are ours. Unity is based on prayer and meditation, and we do have a prayer box. It's over here on the right-hand side. You can write down your request, your celebrations, et cetera, and put it in there. We pray for 30 days here, and then we send that on to Silent Unity, where it is prayed for 30 more days. If you'd like to pray for, with someone here, Teresa Rodriguez is, Teresa is our prayer chaplain for the day, so seek her out. She'll be standing up here in the front. The second thing is that our major way of communicating with you is through eBlast. It's an email thing that comes out on Friday afternoons. If you don't get it, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Please sign up for it. It is our way of telling you what's happening now or what's not happening now. So if you want to stay informed, that's the way to do it. We have several upcoming events, uh, which is always exciting. We are continuing our what, why, and how process that we started several weeks ago. We had a, a conference here last Saturday. On August 20th, we will have a Zoom event. So you will have to sign up for that and get your Zoom contact as closer to the date. And there will be a sign-up sheet for that. It will be continuing the process. We are instituting a Prosperity Plus program with Mary Morrison. I don't know if any of you have taken the program with her in the past. It is a relatively audacious program. It goes on for seven or eight weeks. It is incredibly powerful. Uh, the uh, sign-up sheet for that will be coming out very shortly. And it is a committed time. It's a during the week course. I believe it's seven weeks, two hours, I think, on a Wednesday. It will be by Zoom. And you have to participate. If you don't participate, you're not going to be there. It's as simple as that nor will you get the benefit from it. Our website upgrade is working very well. It will be coming out and will be visible to you probably by the end of next month, which is a terrific thing. And for all you crafters and all you gift seekers, we will be having a craft fair on August, not August, woo, October the 15th here. So if you are a vendor and a craft person, please see Amy Kaleha. Mark your calendars to come shopping. Do your Christmas shopping early. It'll be October the 15th. We are always looking for hospitality people, as well as, I believe it's from M to P for contributions this month for refreshments for the fellowship. Uh, for fellowship. Our speakers for the rest going on of this month, Dr. Ellen Contente, Dr. James King, and Ruth Bolton will be our speakers coming up over the next several weeks. So now I wish us to thank ourselves for being here this fine day and to say the prayer for protection, which is up there someplace. I read today again that this was, on the, this was planted on the moon. So we are all over the place, unity is in the universe. So join me in the prayer for protection and to sing our peace song. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. So now, let there be peace. Thank you. 
God bless. Go forth with joy and lightness. Thank you.